Okay, this is part two, if you're continuing off from where I was doing the wiring diagrams. This is the hands-on showing of how a series and parallel circuits work. And what we're going to do is we're going to start off with a simple circuit just to show how your average circuit work looks when it's applied here. And what I'm using here is called a Duratrax ICE. This is used in the radio control hobby and it's usually used as a battery charger and discharger. But I can also use this as a voltage regulator. So I can take 12 volts of power and be able to convert it to 1 to 8 volts at up to 10 amps of current. That's what I'm going to use for this demonstration. I'm going to set it to start off at 1 volt. And besides being able to set my voltage, I can also read the amperage of whatever load I've got on here. And that will also play a part in showing how the series and parallel circuits work. So what we're going to start with, and I'm using some Capzilla parts that I had left over. This is one of their, their lamps with a bulb in it. And I'm just going to hook it up here to the leads. One there. One there. And I'll start it up at one volt. Hopefully this will work. There we go. Our bulb is lit up. And in a diagram, the ice would work as both our power source and our switch. And then we have our wires coming out, going into our bulb, and then lighting up the filament. And this is running at one volt, and I'm only drawing about two-tenths of an amp at this voltage. And of course, this bulb is a 3 volt light bulb, so I can go up all the way to 3 volts if I wanted to. And now I'm drawing about 3 tenths of an amp. So with the increased voltage, I'm now pulling just about a little bit more, another tenth of an amp. So this is your simple circuit set up right here. So let's move on and show how a series circuit would look. Now for this, we're going to have the light, but we're also going to have a motor. And if you remember what I said in the diagram, a motor is a resistor. So you will see how a motor creates resistance in a wire and what it does to the bulb here. So let me connect these wires. I'll put that one there. We'll connect it into the motor here. And I'll leave it there because I'll be working with the motor. Then we'll take one lead of the lamp, put it into the other end of the motor, and then take the other lead and connect it to our clip over here. And now we'll start all the way back at one volt. Get started. Now, as you can tell, our motor is running, but our lamp is not lit at all. And that's because the motor is running and it's creating resistance in the wire, and it's creating enough resistance that the bulb filament is not able to light. As you recall, this bulb lit up by itself when it was on one volt, when we did our simple circuit. But now with our motor creating resistance, this is not able to light up. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to increase the voltage to the point of where I can get this bulb to light up. Okay. We are now at 3 volts. And at 3 volts, you can barely see this light is lit here. And as you saw, when we ran it at 3 volts, this light was extremely bright. But now it is really dim, and that's because as the motor continues to turn, it's still creating resistance, and it creates more resistance the faster it turns. So, with the resistance in the wire, even at 3 volts, this bulb is not really that bright. And if we look at our amperage, 
if we look at our amperage, we're pulling not a whole lot here. In fact, we're only pulling, we're pulling less than two tenths of an amp. And if you remember, the bulb at one volt was pulling two tenths of an amp. We're pulling less than two tenths of an amp at three volts. Now, that shows you how much resistance this motor is creating. Now, since the motor acts as a variable resistor, watch what happens when I decide to slow the motor down to a stall and watch what the light bulb does. See how the light bulb got bright? Now that the electric motor has stalled, I've eliminated the resistance in the circuit. So now the bulb is now getting the three volts of current. And if I look at the ice, we're now pulling three tenths of an amp again. So I've eliminated the resistance and it's now getting the full current. Oh, and <laughs> And there's your example of an open circuit. I accidentally pulled the wire out of the motor here and I created an open circuit. And as you can see, the light bulb went out. So, if, like I say, if one device fails in a series circuit, it will cut off all other devices in that circuit because it's now an open circuit. It's only one path of travel through all the devices. So in the next part here, I'm going to set it up with a parallel circuit, and we'll have a look at how that one works.